Hello everybody and welcome back to Sustainable Talks with Maria J. So hopefully most of you guys are slowly along your journey to a more sustainable lifestyle. Hopefully you guys have ditched a couple plastics here and there and started thinking more about what you guys can do in terms of reducing your impact on the environment and be a bit more of a global citizen. And if you guys are well along your way to having a more sustainable lifestyle, you guys might be in a bit of a rut. Uh, you guys might be thinking, what's next? What can I do? And hopefully this video will help you guys out because probably about a couple years ago, I found myself in exactly the same spot. I had given up plastics. I was using my kick cup all the time and I was making a really good routine out of it. And then I thought to myself, is that it? Like, what else can I do? Uh, what steps can I take to have a bit more impact? What other changes can I make to help make the world a bit of a better place? And as I've mentioned before, your money does speak a lot. So I've talked about how you spend your money sends a message out to the market. So how you spend your money and what you buy determines the demand and the supply of certain products. Say for example, you love chicken and you buy chicken every night for dinner but then you start thinking okay how is this chicken being grown where is it being grown where how is it growing up how is it living what's its lifestyle like and you start getting concerned about the type of chicken that you're eating and slowly you start buying organic chicken and so as you switch products it sends a message out to the suppliers to the farmers to the market they see that there's a declining demand for chicken, normal chicken, but they see an increasing demand for sustainable ethical chicken. So what happens is the farmers or the market, market whoever's in the market, the guy, they uh, will start seeing that, hey, there's no point in making normal chicken because no one wants to buy it. Like we've got to start breeding organic ethical chicken. So because of the power of people's money it does influence and change the demand and supply within the economy and basically your money says a lot about who you are what you value and what changes you want to see in the world so that's your spending money but what we haven't talked about is your savings hopefully you guys have some savings i know sometimes i don't uh, but how you save your money who you save your money with also plays a big factor in our economy your savings in your bank account don't sit idly there they're not sitting there twiddling their thumbs doing nothing the bank is actually loaning your money out to the industries to the businesses to the market out there so while it remains in digital form in your account it also doesn't I hope that makes sense so like the banks are probably loaning say like your two thousand dollars in your savings account to another business over there and they're earning a return off the interest that's been charged on the loan they're making profit from that and then they basically take give you back your two thousand dollars and they keep the profit for themselves so your savings and how the bank uses it also sends a message out to the market about a year ago uh, fossil fuels became quite taboo I suppose you can say it started getting recognition in the economy that it's pretty bad and in protest of Adani people started calling on the big banks and minor banks or any banks uh, people started calling out on the banks to divest their money from Adani and not support the project because Adani needs a crap load of money and if no one gives money to Adani then Adani can't happen right so because of all that I started thinking about what I'm doing with my money how it's being saved how it's being used and all of that stuff so what is ethical banking? Ethical banking is similar in terms of processes to normal banking, but it's how they invest their money or use the money that's within their institution that's different. So ethical banks tend to 
uh, invest their money in more beneficial activities for society. They might be investing their monies in renewable energy. They might be investing their money in uh, organizations or companies that promote social benefits. And basically, they're just trying to put more good out in the world. And what they're doing is divesting from negative activities. So they will probably refrain from investing money in fossil industries. They might uh, refrain from investing money in deforestation, companies that support or use unsustainable palm oil, and all that kind of bad stuff. So that's what ethical banks are pretty much doing. I will have to say though, it is a bit hard to Google search ethical banks. It Most of the answers just come up with like, you know, look at your values, compare it to the bank, and if it doesn't match, switch. But I couldn't find any comparative sites that didn't look at banks from an interest perspective. So there are a few comparison sites that are out on the interweb and basically you can list a couple banks and it will compare the banks in terms of interest rate, in terms of service fees, in terms of all the financial aspects I guess to see which ones might provide better returns for you, all that kind of stuff. But none of them had a filter that you could use to find sustainable banks. So I couldn't use a filter to find out okay, who's not investing in fossil fuels, who's not investing in animal cruelty and all that kind of stuff so i had to kind of manually do it myself which is a little bit annoying but i've kind of found an easier way which i will share with you and hopefully that will help you guys so when i first opened my bank account i was about 19 years old and i was with combank i was with combank because my family's been with combank for like ever and because of convenience and familiarity that's why i decided to open with combank but as I mentioned, the issues regarding fossil fuels and climate change made me think about why I was with ComBank still. And I slowly started divesting my savings from ComBank. So I currently still do have a transaction account for the purpose of convenience, but all my savings are no longer with ComBank. Two years ago, I opened up a term deposit with Rural Bank. So they're a bank that support um, the farmers out in Australia and that's how they invest their money so most of my savings is there and recently I decided to open another account which I will share with you shortly I found out that uh, according to market forces Combank has invested twenty six thousand five hundred and fifty three million dollars in fossil fuels since 2008 so that's in 11 years and that comes in as second place so first place for investing the most amount of money into fossil fuels goes to ANZ and they have invested $31,235 million in fossil fuels since 2008 yay round of applause to fucking up the earth good job ANZ anyway so I started divesting and I think the easiest website to help you start this process is Market Forces. So Market Forces is a great website that lists all the banks within Australia and tells you whether they are or are not divesting from fossil fuels. So basically what I did was select a few uh, banks that I w was interested in. Uh, from the list of market forces and then I used the CanStar comparative site to compare these ethical banks. So from that I was able to find out which banks were more better in a financial return sense uh, yet s still operated in a sustainable manner. So the one that appealed to me the most was Bank Australia. Bank Australia has been carbon neutral since 2011. They have a massive conservation area out in Warp Warp Victoria uh, which they use to conserve natural environments and native species and they are a responsible bank that doesn't loan to the coal industry, tobacco industry, gambling industry 
for the live export industry which is a massive thumbs up from me and using the CanStar website I was able to find that Bank Australia offered one of the highest interest rates in a saving account uh, regional Australian bank did offer a higher one of 2.55% as you can see but they also did charge a $5 keeping account fee which a bit was a bit of a turn off for me so that's why I decided to go with Bank Australia uh, because of the 2.5% interest rates and because of all the good shit that they do actually opening the account was relatively easy it took about 10 to 15 minutes you just need two forms of ID and making a password and all that kind of stuff and then I just transferred some money into there which is now accruing interest rates which I'm very excited because I did have a goal savers account with Combank and I thought that was pretty good the bonus interest rate but the bonus interest rate at Combank is I think the total interest rates you can earn is a 1.65% which is actually really low compared to 2.5% I mean like 2.5% is it's pretty good it's almost at the rate of a term deposit which is about three percent which was quite high when I first opened my term deposit account so 2.5 percent was like yes yes I want that extra money because I need it I need it for my future yeah opening the bank account was relatively easy and then it was really nice of them that they actually gave me a personal call the next day to thank me for opening an account with them and that was just so nice like I it was unexpected I was like who's this calling me and then it's the bank I was like oh what do they want but actually they were just like thanks for opening an account with us like what made you do it and I was like um, because you're ethical and they're like oh wonderful and I'm like yes it is yes it is now not only am I making money off my savings at a higher rate than I was before but my savings is actually being used for ethical investments that are bringing positive benefits to our society to our world and to our environment so my savings is going into the loans of the renewable energy industry which is helping progress the industry further you know because coal has been around for so long it's such an old form of energy that we're used to it and you know it's i don't know, I don't know like it's become as efficient as it can possibly be i suppose but because renewable energy is still a relatively new energy source it still has a lot of innovation and efficiency that is still yet to come so my money is being used to help support that industry progress further so it can overcome the assumptions and stigma that's associated with it um, being not reliable and all that crap who believes that crap right uh, the sun is the best power hello um, the sun is what makes the earth grow so nothing beats sun power anyway so yeah have a think about money and what you're doing with it and where it's going and I guess like even if you're not too concerned about the ethical values of banking have a look into your interest rates and your terms and conditions of your bank accounts because I feel like you want to get the most out of your money you want to get the best out of your money so you know you don't want to just leave it in an account where it's not accruing anything where there's not much interest being paid out to you have a look at the interest that you guys are getting on your accounts and see if you can do better big banks are making so much profit out of your savings and out of your finances that you save with them so I think it's really important to have a look back into your account and just see how much you're actually getting for your savings um, the financial market out there and the financial institutions they're all quite competitive so I think it's a really good idea to see what your options are out there even if you're not too concerned in an ethical sustainable manner at least from a financial point so you know I think it's just really important to sit and have a think about what you're doing with your savings what your bank is doing with your savings and how your money is being used what kind of investments it's going into and all that kind of stuff this is also applicable to your super 
uh, super is basically a similar situation it's another financial product where your super that's sitting in your account the superannuation fund is actually putting that money into investments for you to earn a return on and that all the profit and all that stuff goes back to you uh, to use when you're retired so basically the same thing because these superannuations are investing your money into all sorts of different industries again you can have a look into what sort of industries or businesses they are investing into it used to be with rest super which is the ideal super for retail industries uh, and every time they sent me my financial statements I could see a pie chart with where they were investing my money into and technically you can choose how much of your investments you want to go where um, but it is a bit tricky and I'm not too familiar with that kind of stuff so you can alternate it to, to like you know change your investments so they're in a more riskier profile but you're also getting a higher return on your investment but I'm not that savvy with shares and all that kind of stuff and investments so I uh, leave it to my superannuation fund and let them do what they will with it but because of the same situation like I found out rest was having uh, a lot of investments in fossil fuels tobacco there's a lot in defense and I'm not too sure how that money is being spent in defense like is it for good defense or bad defense like I'm not too sure there so again I did the same thing and I started thinking about you know how is my super being invested and where is it being invested in and at that time Australian ethical super was was brought to my attention so I did some research into it and they're pretty much similar to Bank Australia where they only invest in sustainable industries and businesses and so things like solar farms um, renewable energy and just businesses and corporations that do good for our society so again they stay away from fossil fuels or tobacco things that have ex negative externalities on our society that we don't think about but will catch up with us later so yeah if you liked this video give it a thumbs up i hope it was quite informative for you guys and probably shed some light on a different aspect of how you can make your life a little bit more sustainable uh, and i hope i've got you thinking a bit more about your finances so if you do like this video don't forget to subscribe because it tells me that i'm kind of on the right track about what i'm doing with these videos and if you guys have any future topics that you guys will be interested in uh, let me know in the comments down below and I will make a video about it and make sure you guys have a look into how your savings accounts are doing and whether you guys are actually earning a decent interest rate on your savings because to be honest in this world right now where everything is so expensive every cent counts so that's it for me today i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i hope you guys have an amazing day bye